what do you think the purpose of this rally is? What do you think John Stewart's trying to say? We're having a really tough time in our nation and our government right now as far as like partisanship. We've seen on both sides people that either are very, my idea, not your idea, there's the only way to fix our country. There are a lot of reasonable people out here who don't have extreme views, and even though I might disagree with half the people around here, I don't obviously think they're Hitler. Yeah. There are a lot of rallies, and uh, there's signs, and I've seen them, and they all seem to be confused about who Hitler is and is not, so I just wanted to stamp out any confusion. I didn't want to just sit back and let the media think that, man, let's just ignore the word, shall we? <laughs> I didn't want it to be that only the extreme side of the points get uh, shown. Yeah. And it's just really nice that, actually, that I'm impressed by the turnout. What do you think the purpose of this rally is? Ask John. <laughs> well, I guess, why did you want to be a part of the rally? I think it's important to be a part of something. I think it's important to stand up for something. Why this something? Because it's about sanity. Just tell me what your sign here, exaggerated hyperbole will sink important legislation. What's that mean? They made the signs. <laughs> I'm just I'm just a bystander. You don't know the meaning of the sign you're holding? No. <laughs> Why should America calm the fuck down? I think it's just really, really way too hyper about this thing. It's just way too much. It's we can do what, this. What's this thing? All the politics one way and the other? I mean, really, we can do this without freaking the fuck out. I see this as transcending politics, this rally. It's a, uh, a call for larger discourse and a civil discussion. We came out today because uh, the Democrats are getting blamed for everything that happened in the Republican administration. Now, do you think that there might be reasons someone might vote Republican, even if they do remember? They're forgetting something, or they wouldn't be voting Republican. So the only option, if you have a good memory, is to vote for Democrats. That's right, exactly. Now, you don't, you don't think in the, at this Restoring Sanity rally, where John Stewart's calling for people to start communicating across sides, that you're contributing to the problem? Well, I think uh, restoring sanity means to see things more clearly. And, and how do you feel about the, the Tea Party movement, the conservative movement, uh, uh, somewhat grassroots movement that has that's come out over the last year, in uh, opposition to the Obama administration's policies? I mean, I don't know, calling it a grassroots movement, I don't know if I would go that far since it's kind of backed by large um, groups with lots of financing and things like that. Um, but I think it's just as harmful you, uh, as... What, how, what do you mean by that? Left. I mean, what do you mean by, you're saying the Tea Party movement is backed by these big groups? Which, well, I mean, you have big groups. Like, you have big politicians endorsing it, like yeah. Glenn like Beck and Sarah Palin. Yeah. Do you think that's any different than the Democratic Party? Probably not. <laughs> I think this event's actually funded by Viacom, so. Right, yeah. right, exactly. As a Democrat, if I were to come here dressed up and, and screaming about how all Republicans were evil, then you really couldn't right. believe anything I said. What do you think about the 9-11 uh, truth people here who are saying that George Bush perpetrated the 9-11 attacks? If you look into some of it, it's... I have a mixed view on that. So you think that uh, the Bush administration orchestrated uh, the largest domestic terror attack in the, our country's history? I do. Or do you think that maybe you're, you're contributing to the, the hyperbolic, acrimonious uh, state of things when you're suggesting that the last Republican administration actually orchestrated this terrorist attack on, on its own citizens? Am I? Yeah. If I don't, someone has to. A lot of the messages are just so simplified in terms of you know how things really work and it people was, yeah. people are just real easy to get behind these just very simple messages I feel like there's not a lot of critical thoughts and what do you what do you think these simple messages are coming from um i mean i see it seems to me not just fox news but the whole kind of corporate news cycle is very focused on short things people can get behind yeah. but a on, lot of them on any side right like yeah. on the whole spectrum so where do you guys get your news then uh, Daily Show. The Daily Show. The Daily Show. John Stewart. John Stewart, mostly. I get my news from John Stewart. I, I really don't you, watch. You think John Stewart would like to hear that? I think he would be frightened to hear that. Um, and as well he should be. Do you think that John Stewart supports the idea that people are watching his show to get news? I don't think so. I think he wishes that we all researched it more than at his show, really, because he says it's a comedy show and we really should be getting that kind of news from actual news shows. But you haven't heeded that advice? Uh, no. 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 So besides Jon Stewart, who do you think has done a, a good job covering? Anyone? 
Um, I think Keith Overman does a good job. Of MSNBC. It. Huffington Post. Oh, Huffington Post. Huffington Post. MSNBC. I am a fan of MSNBC. Like I enjoy, I enjoy uh, some of the shows on there. But I, I do realize that you know they have their spin as well. You cited John Stewart first, and then Keith Overman. But John Stewart's certainly not very nice to Keith Overman. Keith Overman said a lot of sort of, a lot of uh, exaggerated hyperbole has come out of has come out of Keith Overman. You you still but you still stand by him as a good source for news. Well, I mean, I, I like the way that he brings things to the surface. Is he always correct? I don't think anybody's always correct. But, you know, it, I like I like his attitude and I like the, the way, his format, that, the way he brings things forward. Do you think that there might be people who watch Glenn Beck that would say the same thing about him, that he just brings things to the oh, surface? Sure. And, you know, and, and it's, you know, everybody's going to listen to their specific point of view. You know, instead of bitching about Fox or instead of complaining about Fox, you have to set up like MSNBC or instead of complaining about right-wing talk radio, you set up some left-wing talk radio. So you think, you think the response to the hyperbole uh, of the right is to create our own institutions of hyperbole for the, for the left? I really believe that because CNN tried to walk the middle. It didn't work for them. They have the least viewers. And John Stewart show he's being just as critical of MSNBC as he is of Fox News. He's saying that, you know, this is the problem, that we have media that turns uh, serious issues into entertainment issues. But it seems like you, you disagree with Stewart. You support that this is happening. No, I think he should turn serious issues into entertainment issues. And he, he is critical of people on the left when they're acting insane. Okay, I'm for the left. I'm not for insanity, but I am for entertainment. It just strikes me that to, to decide that uh, the, the response to the right having their own cable channels and their own partisan news outlets is to get our own, that seems like the most insane thing we could do. That, that seems like the, the opposite of sanity. Okay, <clears throat> if the library only had right-wing books, I would set up a library that had left-wing books. At I, would, least I would set up a library that just there. had books. Well, see, the thing is that they've tried that in the news media. It hasn't worked. The news media today, and I'm talking about not just Fox, MSNBC, CNN, all these news outlets are only interested in making money, so they've got to present drama. And that's not news. And the media in the 24-hour news cycle seems to be focusing so much on how do I get ratings, how do I get my point across, and since there are so many people talking, the only way seems to be that, oh, well, we'll just focus on whatever the biggest, loudest thing is that we can make the most comments on. Intelligent arguments said in a reasonable manner don't, don't really make good sound bites and don't really get lots of views on YouTube. They take a, a benign story uh, of moderately interesting story and they fill it full of drama and make everybody afraid. The 24-7 cycle doesn't allow for good news. Everybody is got the adrenaline rush and overstimulation of fear, fear, fear. If you don't pass this, then we're going to be overrun by illegals and your way of life is going to disappear. The haves, be afraid. The have-nots are coming for you. The have-nots, be afraid. It'll never get any better. No! So you think that the journalism is suffering because of that? Oh yeah, I don't think there are any real journalists today. You know, one of the signs I saw for this rally was uh, Edward R. Murrow would roll over in his grave. Well, you betcha. You know, Walter Cronkite wouldn't understand what, what's going on now. Do you think there are consequences to, new, to having a, a, a news landscape like that? Yeah, people are less informed. What are some of the elections going on in Michigan? <laughs> I'm such a bad politician. I, I've been focusing more on the calming down than the actual paying attention. What congressional district are you in? Is there a race going on there? Um, I, we there. just moved into con yeah. congressional <laughs> districts. Sure. We just got a college, so we're moving around. So uh, I don't know of any in our congressional district. And, and how about your congressional district races? What's going on there? Well, to be honest, I actually live in Maryland now, so I'm not up to date on the South Carolina congressional. How about you? What congressional district? Is there a race going on? Yeah, yeah. Um, What's his name? Uh, Riggle and uh, I just moved there. Did you so. get time to think of your congressional <laughs> district? Yeah. Um, haven't done as much research on that as I should have. Um, I did not vote for that because I was not aware uh, enough of the candidates. I wasn't back home. I wasn't able to research them enough. I'm not even very familiar with the candidates at the moment. Is there a, a congressional race for you this year? Oh my gosh. I, I'm afraid that the only things that commit to memory nowadays are pharmaceuticals and parasites. A congressional uh, race in your district this year? Um, I believe there is. You don't have to record that. I don't see the red light, <laughs> so you can cut that out.
there's a special kind of um, explosive that people that were, it could be almost like paint and workers would be painting it on. I, I have a problem with the, the boxes too, that they haven't found the boxes. The planes did in fact hit, but why didn't the planes get shot down before they hit the buildings? There's so many questions.